Hey everybody, Tex here from the Texas Media Foundry in College Station, Texas. I wanted to talk real quick about this thing right here. It is the ATA Carnet. And what this thing does, it allows you to take all kinds of professional equipment uh, across the border. Uh, for our instance, it was from the US over to Canada and back. It works in 70 some odd countries and allows you to get into and out of uh, other countries without really any issues uh, we didn't have any this is the first time that we've used this the reason i want to put this video together real quick is because there's very few videos that i've found while i was researching how are we going to take all of this stuff with us to canada for a job and come back without dealing with duties and taxes and and all of those things because i know that that can be an issue so i looked up on the ata carnet and how it works and whatnot and there's official documentation in here that has shows you all the other countries that you can go to and basically the way it works is you take inventory of all of the gear that you're going to take with you on your trip um, again we're video production people but if you're uh, doing stuff for trade shows exhibiting uh, if you're in a band and you've got musical gear uh, things of that nature um, doesn't work for everything but for our purposes it, it worked out just fine so you have to take a list of all the things you have put them into a spreadsheet uh, this is this is our process and we had 63 items we probably put more than we really needed to put on there uh, we put all the way down to our batteries and serial numbers model numbers the weight the estimated value of of what you have like the macbook pro i have here a couple thousand dollars put that on the list uh, all our cameras lighting equipment everything we ended up with somewhere in, around the value of twenty four thousand dollars worth of stuff that we were taking and that raises red flags if you do not have this well thankfully we had it and you send all the stuff over to the people at boomerang carnets who we got this through and they make an entire list of everything here that uh, that we'll have and when you go to leave at US Customs what we did we went from Dallas Fort Worth Airport to Toronto and then we flew out of Montreal back to Dallas two different airlines but that's not important what's important is the process here so what we had to do for DFW Airport is we had to go to US Customs before we even checked any bags in that's the very first thing you want to do and you want to have this ready to go once you get there find us customs make sure that they're open make sure they have somebody who knows about these items what happened for us was it took about 30 minutes to finally get to the right person and they took my passport took my boarding pass which i had the mobile pass on my phone just to check to make sure that that's where i was going took the passport took this and said grab your items for inspection now they don't have to check anything or they could check everything they're paid by the hour they're going to do what they want to do and you just have to smile and say okay this is what we're doing we had to pull out two items my macbook and my sony camera he wanted to see those match serial numbers and then he was good he's like okay that's enough for me and he stamps it signs it dates it you put your own signature here and then you check your bags as normal at american or wherever airline you're at get the flight to canada get to canada uh, the first thing you do when you get off the plane there's a bunch of kiosks there that you put in your information um, there's nothing to do with this at that time uh, you're just saying why you're there it takes a picture of you and you take that sheet that, that it prints out then you go up to the customs window you have this and they say okay you need to go around this corner to i can't remember exactly what they called it but i mean they explained it that everybody was really cool there they explained okay you have all this gear you need to go over to this location so if i remember correctly i'm trying to remember the the i'm talking to joe behind the camera here uh, if i remember correctly we went through that then we went to get our bags then we went to where they checked this so we went there and the guy who was checking us in i don't know if he had really done one of these before so he consulted with uh, one of his uh, co-workers and looked at it and checked everything on the list to make sure it looked right without checking our gear uh, he just kind of took our word for it and stamped on his section here and that was it 
And then we went to work and did our job in Canada and then went to Montreal to the airport there. And first thing you do is you go to Canadian Customs and check in down there. And same thing, he didn't check any of our gear. He just wanted to make sure that the passport and the boarding pass and, and that I had this and he was good with it and he stamped us out. That's almost it. In Montreal and at some other airports around the world, but in Montreal, uh, once you check your bags, there's a little confusion on our part. We we're trying to figure out, we need to see US Customs. We need to see US Customs before we check our bags. But apparently that's not the way it is now. You still go ahead and check your bags put them through the oversized section. You can put them on a uh, uh, conveyor one at a time and they check them and then off they go. To which I'm thinking, we don't have access now. Anyway, from there we go through Canadian security. From Canadian security to US Customs, they're one right after the other. And they ask immediately, you know, film crew, okay, where's your carnet? It's right here. He's like, you need to tell me that. And I was like, I'm getting to it, but anyhow. So here it is, I showed it to him, he took my passport, took me around the corner to uh, a main check-in area. My gear is gone, I've got my backpack and my laptop so I can show him that stuff if he needs it. And the guy was super cool and he's like, do you have any uh, food? And I said, I got a bottle of maple syrup and he kind of laughed and it took about 10 minutes while they were just looking at different things. He never looked at any of my gear, any of the gear that we brought, didn't request it to come back from wherever it was in baggage. and. Uh, he stamped it back out. Get to Dallas, grab our bags and go. There was no other check-in procedure in Dallas or anything like that. So that's what we got out of getting this document. So here's the first sheet that uh, is in the carnet and it's got listed the company, who can present this item, what's it for, professional goods, professional equipment, all the locations it can be used at. And this is what happened in Dallas-Fort Worth. This is the initial check-in to activate this document. And they, yes, they examined the goods, only a couple of them, but they examined them and signed and stamped everything. It's critical that you get the stamps as you go. And this is a list of all our stuff, tons of stuff, too much stuff. But uh, yeah, 63 line items, 94 pieces total, all the way from cameras down to batteries. When you get to Canada or your destination, Actually, before you get to Canada, this is also, when, when this is signed and stamped, this first section has to be signed and stamped by the same individual who just signed and stamped that first page. Once this part is done, get on your flight, go to Canada or wherever you're going, and this first section, don't pay attention to this, this first section is what Canada hits. They verify the items one through 63, the date, the stamp, signature, the whole nine yards. You do all your work in Canada. When you're ready to go back home, you bring the same page and you notice it's, it's item one, item one. This is your first trip in and out. And they marked it out. And when you get back to the US or pre-clearance, they hit this one here. This is the re-importation. And that's it. That is it, it's uh, easy doings. Super easy. The cost is tied into the value of what you take. And it, it's like the minimum is about $400 for this document. It's good for a year. We had to pay a little bit more because we are a new operation and we don't have a year's worth of profit loss statements for the surety bond that goes along with this that uh, lets them know that if there's any issues that we can pay the duties and taxes. For, and we didn't have to do any of that, obviously, but uh, we did have to pay extra. So the grand total for us out the door with this thing was about $2,600, which we will get 1,500 of it back as soon as we send this back. Uh, we can keep it for a year or we can go ahead and send it back. And we don't anticipate any other uh, cross-border work in the next three to six months or so, and we could use the money, we're gonna go ahead and send it back. If y'all have any questions on how this thing works, uh, feel free to uh, put a comment down below and we'll try to get back to you on it. Um, hopefully that kind of explained it and, you know, Boomerang Carnet didn't say, hey, make a video for us, but I just 
wanted to put that out there. They, they have their own videos um, that kind of explain the process as well. But from a filmmaker's perspective or video production perspective, I wanted to put something out there just so, so y'all could see it. So that's it for now. We got to go edit all that video that we shot over the past couple days. A lot of work ahead. Y'all be good, be cool, be careful. Thanks for watching. We'll see you down the road.